Good morning and welcome to Crossroads with George Cavour. It's drizzling outside so I couldn't go out and sit. I had everything ready and then discovered as I went and sat down that it was drizzling so I had to come back in. Hi Victor. Great to have you with us this morning. El Shaddai, El Shaddai. Though your word contained the plan, people simply couldn't understand. Praise the Lord. Morning, J.C. Mozo. Hi, Carol. Good to see each and every one of you this Tuesday morning. Hi, Jessica. I'm glad you were able to join us this morning. Praise God. God is good and his mercies endure forever. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me this Tuesday morning. Praise God. wonderful Savior who is always wanting to communicate with us. Father, we thank you so much for bringing us all together this morning, and we pray that you would speak to us, bless us, encourage us with your presence, guide and lead us, we pray. Precious Lord, keep us in the center of your will. Help us to live a life that is holy and pleasing in your sight. Guide and direct our paths, we pray. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are so flawed, so inconsistent, so full of contradictions. And yet, you accept us, you love us, you care for us, and you are always there when we come to you through prayer. Lord Jesus, open our hearts and our minds as we study your word, and we thank you for the men and women who took an active role as leaders of your people, giving us examples, role models, and speaking what you said to them. We thank you for your word that guides, leads, and illumines our path. For we pray and ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, we're going to look at Paul's letter to the Romans in chapter 5. You know that the letter of Paul to the Romans is an incredible theological treatise. Paul deals with a whole bunch of theological doctrines and issues in his letter to the Romans. And I'm so glad for the scholarship of Paul, for his sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, his understanding of the Old Testament, his experience Experience of Jesus Christ and the ability to adapt and be transformed through the Holy Spirit to be able to connect different portions of the Old Testament with what God was doing in His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so this morning, I pray 
that the Lord will bless you and encourage you. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. Romans 5, 1 to 5. Therefore, since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You know, my brothers and sisters, as I said, Paul, in his letter to the Romans, identifies various attributes of God and he teaches us how we can access God, connect with God, and make connections with His Word, His world, and what He is doing in the world through His Spirit. So, in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 itself, we find two great doctrines. One is justification. We have been justified by faith. In other words, we have been made righteous with God through the finished work of Jesus on the cross and the gift of faith that enables us to appropriate what Jesus achieved for us on the cross. I hope you make that connection. You understand Justif justified, we can use another word, being made righteous, being made acceptable, being made reconciled to God. Justified. The connection is clear. Secondly, it is through faith and faith alone. Of course, Paul's teaching on faith uh, is so important because he's trying to help the Jews come to terms that salvation is not by our works. We don't achieve our salvation by observing the law, but rather the law actually condemns us because we are never able to fully satisfy the law and therefore we are convicted. So in contrast to the law and works, Paul is pointing out the dynamic place of faith in the grand economy of God's plan of salvation. I hope you understand it. So we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And for Paul, he is so Christocentric. He's so Christ-centered. He wants to always highlight the centrality of Jesus Christ in God's great plan of salvation. And that Jesus, who is the incarnate word in his pre-incarnate role, is the Word of God that was the instrument of God's creation. And we have been reconciled. We have made peace with God because of what Jesus was able to secure for us through his death and sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Next, Paul talks about, we have obtained access. Now, if you understand the topography of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, 
there is the Holy of Holies, the presence of God. That's where the Ark of the Covenant is kept. That's where the high priest can go in once a year. The visible presence of God, the glory of God. Then there is the, the court of the faithful, the Jews. And then there is the court of the Gentiles. The Gentiles are never given access to God other than to be able to stand from a distance and observe and visualize the presence of God. And the hope is that they will, <coughs> excuse me, they will be convicted and will become people of the covenant by exercising faith and being circumcised. And here... Paul is saying, Jesus has granted us access. Praise the Lord. And he says, look, if you understand how you're able to stand in the presence of God, it's only through grace. And of course, the doctrine of grace is so important in the way Paul builds up his theology of faith. Grace is that character and attribute of God where we are given privileges, blessings, not because of our own merit, but because of this quality of grace. Isn't that wonderful? That God is so gracious. Hi, Rani. And so I pray pray that the Lord will bless you and speak to you. We are able to come into the presence of God because of what Jesus did on the cross, but also because of this quality of grace that God is known for. He is merciful. He is gracious. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. As we stand in his presence, we have hope building in us that we too will share in the glory of God. Not because of anything we've done, but because our faith is in Christ Jesus. In verse 3 he says, while I talk about all these precious, highfalutin thoughts and ideas, the reality is that we are being persecuted. We are being humiliated. We are being hounded by the Jewish authorities, by the Roman authorities. And it's incredibly difficult to follow Jesus because there is a price to be paid. And so he, Paul writes in verse 3, not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering. You know, even though we are suffering and we are being persecuted and hounded, we see this all within the grand scheme of what God is doing in us and through us. While we experience hardships, hostilities, challenges, opposition, we have difficulties and problems. But guess what? All these sufferings produce in us endurance, resilience, the ability to withstand pressures, enduring difficulties, challenges, like a marathon, running that race to secure the prize. And what he is saying is, my brothers and sisters, all these physical adversities and challenges actually have a spiritual impact in terms of producing this ability to endure, to stick with the call and the task. 
and he says sufferings produce endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope make the connections sufferings endurance endurance character and character produces hope all vital virtues in a child of god in the disciple of our lord jesus christ and look at the power of hope hope does not put us to shame because god's love has been poured out into our hearts praise the lord god's love has been poured into our hearts through the holy spirit so you were under, trying to figure out where i was going to bring the holy spirit because for the past two or three weeks i've been teaching on the holy spirit the holy spirit is refining us producing within us a response to an external intimidation which is persecution opposition and challenge it's like an oyster producing a pearl when that external dirt that grit gets into an oyster the oyster covers it with the mother of pearl and we like a a pearl a precious pearl are being covered by the virtues of god endurance character hope and most importantly of all we are secure and we know that god's love is being poured out into our hearts through the holy spirit so you see the holy spirit has such a pivotal role in all that god is doing in us and through us we often talk of the holy spirit as the comforter the teacher the guider but the holy spirit is an active participant in our formation as disciples of jesus christ he allows the external circumstances of opposition challenge persecution hardship to produce in us this wonderful resilience that we call endurance we have to learn to endure it's like carbon being subjected to such incredible pressures that over a sustained period of time that carbon becomes a diamond God is making us diamonds. And so I want you to thank God for the challenges that you face in life, for the difficulties you face in life. And my prayer is that God will bless you, encourage you, use you for his glory. Isn't that wonderful? God's love is poured into us through the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that is the conduit, the via media by which we will experience the comfort and the presence of God's love upholding us, protecting us, preserving us and providing for all our needs. Praise the Lord. And so this morning I want us to worship almighty God and to truly give him the honor and the glory. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, who in the Old Testament was known as almighty God, El Shaddai.
And I pray that God will help you and bless you as you make these connections. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El El Yonna Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same by the power of the name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kamkana Adonai. We will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. Through your love and through the ram, you saved the son of Abraham. And by the power of your hand, you turned the sea into dry land. To the outcast on her knees, you were the God who really sees. And by your might, you set your children free. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Elyonna Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same by the power of the name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kamkana Adonai. We will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. Through the years you made it clear that the time of Christ was near. Though the people failed to see what Messiah ought to be. Though your word contained the plan, they just could not understand. That your most awesome work was done Through the frailty of your son El Shaddai, El Shaddai El El Yonna Adonai Age to age you're still the same By the power of your name El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kamkana Adonai. We will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El El Yonna Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same by the power of the name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kamkana Adonai. We will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. Hi, Nick. Good to have you join us this morning. What a wonderful God we have. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining me this morning. And I continue with what God is teaching me as we study God's word. And I pray that the Lord will guide, lead, and teach us his ways. If you'd like to ask me questions, message me on Facebook. 
or you can email me on gikavor at gmail.com g-i-k-o-v-o-o-r at gmail.com in the meanwhile god bless you i'm praying for each one of you by name and i thank you for joining me encouraging me and being a blessing to me even as i break god's word for each one of you now may the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us now and forevermore amen see you tomorrow morning at 8 30 in the meanwhile be blessed stay blessed and remember you and i are called to be a blessing to others Bye-bye.